Good morning. My name is Laksh Bell and today I want to talk to you about the topic of investment and what it is and how easy it, uh, it is to become an investor, a full-time investor and be very successful at the craft. Now, there are certain issues with the assumptions that we're going to make today. I've got some projections for you to look at. And there are some issues with the assumptions I've made, which I'm going to discuss in due time. The primary assumption is that you can get consistent returns year after year from your investments and the yield can be high which I suppose is not always going to be true. You're going to see crests and troughs in your investment career. But overall, it does average out to a single number. So if you're investing for the long term, from the beginning of your investment to the end of your investment, you're going to have a single number, right? And we are going to assume that number for today and we're going to take some basic assumptions take some liberty about basic assumptions about what that number can be. But other than that, let's talk about the fundamental principles of investing or the fundamental truths that I know about investing. First of all, investment is always risky. You should never invest any amount of money before you have a certain amount of savings in your account. So for instance, for me, that number is two years. If I can take care of all my expenses of two years and I have enough money in my savings account to take care of all my expenses for two years, I'm good to invest. Okay, so if you don't have that, of course, you should be putting more money into your savings account and less or no money into your investment account and less money on your expenses and try to minimize your expenses, of course. But as we'll talk about in this series, investment is inherently risky okay and unless you have a cushion to take care of your financial blows that do tend to come in life from point from time to time um, you shouldn't really be investing having said that once you're ready to invest investment is apart from being risky also a long-term game and your job as warren buffett would say as an investor is to a not lose your investment or a part of it and B don't lose your capital okay that's basically what investment is all about or to minimize the losses so in the due course I'm going to talk about how to minimize your losses or eliminate your losses altogether minimize your risk while maximizing your yield you're going to talk about that but today I just want to talk to you about possibilities okay just the possibilities so what I have here is a sheet that says that you're going to start this year. Okay, let's say you're going to start investing this very year and you're going to invest half of your income because you've got enough savings in your account right now and you're making an average income of $50,000 a year and you would like to save, uh, uh, you know, no, you've got enough savings so you don't have to save anymore and you would like to invest half of your income while the other half takes care of your expenses, okay? Now, this is not a typical example. Most people are not able to save even 10% or save or invest 10% of their income. And to them, I say, shame on you, really. If you've got, you know, if you're making $50,000 a year, then you really shouldn't be spending more than a couple thousand bucks a month uh, on living because really that's all you can afford or you're not going to have a decent retirement because as we move forward, science is making it possible for people to live longer. Okay. And if you retire at 60 and go on to live until the age of a hundred and you run out of money at 80 because you only planned for 20 years worth of mm, uh, retirement capital, right or a retirement portfolio then what are you going to do at the age of 80 go back to work or get a new job at 80 start a new business at 80 right you don't want to do that so we're going to take that into account and we are going to think about so if you want to be a smart investor and you want to think like smart investors you want to minimize your expenses to the basics to the bare minimum and a little bit of luxury at least for the beginning periods and you're going to see why the first years are the most crucial ones and you're going to see why, 
okay? But let's say you can somehow put away $25,000 a year to invest, okay? And this sum increases by, or your investment amount, dedicated investment amount, increases by 1% every year. That means in 2018, you invest $25,000. In 2019, you invest $25,250 because your income's increased and so has your investment ability. Then in 2020, you invest $25,503 because your ability to invest has gone up and that goes up by 1%, a small, tiny, marginal 1% each year, right? Now, you continue to do that for 40 years. So this may not be applicable for everyone, right? You may already be 40 or 50 years old and you may not have 40 years of investment uh, possibility going on for yourself because you don't want to continue working for another 40 years and that's okay. We're gonna talk about ways to mitigate that now uh, in a future video. But let's say you go on to invest for 40 years and your average performance over the course of your investment lifespan is 25%, which I know is huge, right? Uh, or at least seems to be huge to most people because they don't understand a lot of scientific methods of investing. And as one of my friends would say, uh, they do a lot of voodoo investing. But let's say, you know, in a nice little world where everyone, you know, gets what they're owed and everyone just pays their bills on time and every uh, saver you know, every person who sacrifices to save and invest is rewarded justifiably, you make 25%. At the end of 40 years, you would end up with $979,384,000. Nine hundred and seventy-five million, nine seventy-nine million, almost a billion dollars, okay? In 40 years, you would have invested what? A million dollars total out of your pocket, maybe a little bit more because it increases by 1%, right? So 1.5 million, maybe, right? But you would end up with a billion dollars, okay? That's the power of the long term. Einstein was absolutely right when he said that the most powerful force in the universe is compounding. That's what he said. He said the most powerful force in the universe is compounding because he knew the power of long term impact of a compounding advantage or disadvantage as we've seen in a lot of cases a lot of people tend to lose millions hundreds of millions and even billions of dollars simply because they made the wrong decisions and compounding forces worked against them it's a big force of nature compounding is a big force of nature okay now say you don't have $25,000 a year to invest say you're not making as much money as you would like and you can't invest $25,000 well, how about 10,000, okay? If you invest $10,000 this year and $10,100 next year and $10,201 the following year and increase your investment by 1% and you aggregate 25%, again, it's a big assumption, you would still end up with almost $400 million at retirement. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. If you don't have $10,000 a year, how about $2,500 a year? You would still end up with $100 million. Seems decent, not a lot of people end up with that. I mean, you know, there are thousands, maybe even tens or hundreds of thousands of people worth $100 million, so it is doable, like people do it every day, but percentage-wise, it's not even 1%, it's like 1% of 1% of 1%, right? 0.00001% oh, 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 uh, of the general populace who get to that level. So it's still not bad, even if you can only start with 2,500 bucks. Now, what if you don't have the ability or the skill as an investor? You have, you have no training as an investor and you can only do 15%, which is what, by the way, Standard & Poor tends to do over a long term, 15%, right? And dividends and uh, capital appreciation. These days, it's largely dividends and not capital appreciation. But over the long term, if you think about it, it's 12 to 15%, sometimes 18%, depending upon which time period you invested in. And act smartly, right? 15% is a decent rate of return for any investor. And, uh, you know, anyone with a small amount of training can do that. Even your stupid money manager can do that for you, okay? So you start with $25,000. Same assumptions. You're increasing by 1% and you still end up with $54 million, not quite the billion, 
but still 54 million, it's not nothing, okay? You don't have 25,000, you've got 10,000, you still end up with, I don't know, 20, 25 million, something like that, right? Anything between, something between 20 and 25 million. But if you don't have 10,000 a year, you can only start with 2,500 bucks a year. You really should be able to invest 200 bucks a month, right? To call yourself an investor. But if you have only 200 bucks a month to invest and you do that consistently for 40 years, you'll still end up with $5.4 million at your retirement. Again, you're still gonna be in the top 1%. Okay, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Now, here's what I want you to notice. If you look at these numbers carefully, what you're going to notice is that the very first sum of $25,000 that you invest in 2018 will end up becoming $6.69 million, okay? Out of the 54 million. In fact, you can see on the column, um, at, in the column at the right here, the uh, very first few years, okay? In fact, you can see the percentage of your overall portfolio keeps going down as we go down the line. In fact, what you can do is you can totally stop investing in let's say 10 to 15 years and just let the accumulated capital grow at the rate of 15%, right? If you stop investing in let's say 13 or 14 years, you would still end up with $46 million instead of $54 million. Okay, so it's not like you've got to sacrifice for your entire life. You can only sacrifice for the next 14 years, wait another 26 years, and at the end of the day, you'll still end up a multimillionaire. Okay, so investing is not hard. It's not hard. In fact, I've got one more thing for you, okay, and that breaks it down even further. Now, this sheet is about daily investment instead of yearly investment, okay? If you invest 100 bucks a day for 40 years at 30%, well, you know, <laughs> that's not um, a shabby return because you end up with a $5 billion portfolio. Now, getting a 30% year after year consistent performance might be a bit of a challenge unless you really know what you're doing, but we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna detail a plan for that possibility. But okay, you know, 30% 30, 30 is too high, 15%, that should be doable, right? 100 bucks a day, 40 years, 15%, not quite the 5 billion, but you still end up with 69.68 million, which is, you know, almost $70 million. Again, 1% of 1%, right? You don't have 100 bucks a day? How about 10 bucks a day? You still end up with $7 million, okay? So my point is this. No matter who you are, no matter what your financial station is in life, if you know a little bit about what you're doing, and if you are careful about balancing your expenses, right? If you don't spend too much money on stuff that just provides instant gratification and you don't really need it, right? You just want to have that instant gratification. If you can hold off on some of those purchases, at least for the next 10 to 15 years, you really have over the long term, over the course of your entire career, especially if you're getting started right now or if you've just gotten started 10 years ago, right? you really have that potential to become a multi-millionaire or even a billionaire, right? It's not that hard. So why don't more people do it? There are people who will constantly, consistently go on and buy lottery tickets, okay? Well, I'll tell you something. 30%, 30 years, every week on Tuesday and Saturday, twice a week, if you invest $1 in a fund that does 30% a year for 30 years consistently, you still end up with a million dollars. Okay, you still end up with a million dollars. I don't see what the big deal is. I don't see why people think it's a big deal to be a millionaire or even a billionaire. Billionaires just have had more time. That's it. There's no question in my mind if I live another 60 or 70 years, I'm gonna end up a multi-billionaire because there is no other way. I am a reasonably advanced investor, if I might say so myself, and I'm good at investing and 30% returns are easy for me to generate with my investment portfolio. And I don't see why I would have to contend with a mediocre life. I mean, sure, I'm living in a you know tiny apartment right now, but the reason for that is because I want to be able to invest as much as I can right now, okay? And over the next five to 10 years, and I've been doing that already for five years now, right? Uh, being a serious investor. 
If I can continue to do that for another 10, maybe even 15 years, and then even if I stop investing altogether and just take care of the existing portfolio I have built up by then, I'll end up a multi-millionaire by the time I'm 40 and multi-billionaire uh, by the time I'm, you know, 60. By the time I die, who knows, I might even be the richest person or at least one of the top 10 people on the Forbes list of richest people on the planet. Because it's only a matter of time. I mean, look at Warren Buffett. Okay, his portfolio does 15% a year because it's so large that cherry picking stocks just doesn't work for him any longer. So his performance is at par with the performance of the general stock index. And he's one of the top five. He's been consistently one of the top five. He didn't create anything. He didn't create, um, you know, a, a lot of, um, uh, you know, gadgets or widgets or products to sell or services to sell. Sure, he, you know, bought companies that did that, right? But that's how it is. My point is this, if you want to be seriously wealthy, and we're talking, you know, generational wealth, legacy wealth, right? Um, it takes time, it takes discipline, and it takes some amount of know-how, okay? Now, what do you do if you're not at a stage where you've got another 40, 40 years of worth of investment? Well, we'll talk about that in more detail. Uh, in our upcoming videos, but you still have options. Like I said, what you invest today is far more important than what you can possibly invest 10 years from now, okay? And the higher the return you can get by, while still minimizing the risk, the better it's gonna be, obviously, right? Unfortunately, most people don't understand what the risk profile is, what, how high it is, how low it is, and how sometimes increasing risk or many times very often increasing risk does not in lead to a proportional increase in reward in fact there is a point up till which increasing the risk increases the reward and then beyond that higher risk or greater risk leads to a decrease in performance and people still take that risk Okay, so what is the optimum amount of investment that you should throw in into any given available investment opportunity? We'll talk about that in the upcoming videos, but I hope you enjoyed this video and you had a perspective, some perspective about how much money there is to be made in this world if you just have the patience and confidence and a little bit of skill and willpower. The key takeaway? start investing now. And if you don't have a savings account, start filling that up now instead of spending money on big screen TVs or big new shiny cars or shiny new jackets and clothes that you don't really need. You know, I've got four suits. They're all very expensive, but I've got four. You know, I have no shame in saying that. I've got two overcoats, like the long coats, trench coats. I've got four or five pairs of shoes. That's about it maybe a dozen shirts, mostly white, because <laughs> I don't like to, you know, do the laundry too often. So that's about it. That's all I have. Um, you don't need a lot more than that. And if I run out of a pair of shoes and one of, uh, if, I, if I basically destroy a pair of shoes while walking or do something bad to them, I'll buy one more, but that's it. So spend money only on stuff that you need. Warren Buffett is right about if you're spending money on things that you don't need, on stuff that you don't need, pretty soon you'll find yourself selling stuff that you do need to get that money back because <laughs> you've got a more urgent or pressing matter elsewhere. So that's it from me. That's it for this video. The future's bright. It's the golden age of investing, as my friend would say. And uh, yeah, have a great day and have a great, prosperous investment future. This is Lakshbel signing off.